The following lecture is going to allow you to identify um, the relative act reactivity of species that are present on an activity series chart. Okay, and you're also going to be able to determine if a redox reaction will occur um, using said activity series chart. The activity series is something that's going to allow us to establish if a metal is going to be oxidized by the substances that it's being exposed to. Um, specifically, we're going to be focusing on if the metal can be oxidized by acid or particular metal salts. Um, and as you can see in this table right here, uh, we have a list of metals, okay, as well as hydrogen here. Um, and basically what this table tells us is how readily or how easily um, that specific metal is oxidized. So the metals that are at the top of the list are the most easily oxidized, and the metals at the bottom of the list are the least easily oxidized. And what's neat about the activity series here is that a metal that's higher on the chart is going to be readily oxidized by a metal ion that is below it in the chart. So what does that mean? That means that, for instance, lithium can be oxidized by uh, potassium ion, barium ion, calcium ion, and so forth. Um, and basically with that, that allows you to establish um, if a specific reaction or specific redox reaction will occur um, based on having two substances present. And we'll look at how to apply that in a second. Now, um, something else that needs to be understood is that when we're referring to the hydrogen here, as I pointed out early, earlier, um, that's actually going to be referring to the way in which a metal is going to react with an acid. Um, so uh, if we look at... Um, the specific example here, um, any of the metals above the hydrogen um, space that we see here are going to be able to react or going to be oxidized in the presence of acid. So if you put barium, calcium, uh, sodium metal, iron, cobalt, nickel, etc., if you put them in the presence of an acid, they will be oxidized and subsequently um, break down into their ion form. So these are the basics of how to utilize the activity series chart. Um, so let's go ahead and let's apply that. So the application here is going to um, be applied in uh, these two questions here. Okay, so we're going to look at this first question. It asks if an aqueous solution of iron to chloride um, will oxidize the magnesium metal. Um, and in order to answer this, we're going to utilize this activity series chart. Okay, and they've also asked us to write a balanced molecular and net ionic equation for any reactions that will actually occur. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply this. So the first thing we need to consider is what species we are looking at in solution. So the first thing to consider is that we have iron to chloride. Um, so in this context, we are dealing with iron in the plus two oxidation state. Okay, and they're telling us that that is going to be interacting with magnesium metal. Okay, so magnesium um, is in its elemental state, so we have an oxidation number of zero. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take these two species and we're going to compare their relative position on the chart. Now remember, a metal that is higher on the chart, okay, is going to be oxidized by um, any ions that are below it on the chart. Okay, so if we go ahead and we look at magnesium, that's the metal that we are dealing with. Okay, so magnesium is right there. Um, and we go ahead and we find iron. Okay, so the magnesium metal is higher on the chart than the iron ion. Okay, so this reaction will occur. So since we know this reaction is going to occur, let's go ahead and write a balanced uh, molecular equation. Okay, it's going to react with magnesium. And that's going to give us... Okay, and we look over it. It looks like it's balanced. Okay, and we've got the correct magnesium. So this is our balanced molecular equation. Okay, and then if we go ahead and write our net ionic equation, so just the species that are actually involved um, in the redox process, get... The following. Okay, so we have our balanced equation, we have our um, balanced net ionic equation here, okay, and this is our answer to question number one. Okay, so 
Let's go ahead and apply the same approach to question number two here. Okay, and they're asking about uh, lead to nitrate, um, oxidizing copper metal. Okay, so in this context, we have lead plus two and um, copper metal that are reacting. So once again, we're going to find them on um, this activity series. So copper is available right um, here. Okay, and our lead is available right here. Okay, so copper is our metal. Okay, lead is our ion. So in this context, the ion is higher on the chart than the metal. So in this context, the lead uh, plus two ion is not going to oxidize the copper. So in this context, what we would indicate is that no reaction will occur, or NR. Okay, and since there's no reaction, we're not going to have a balanced molecular equation or net ionic equation. An additional thing that I want to point out um, in these process, processes using the activity series is that although we're focusing on oxidation, please understand that reduction is also happening at the same time. So if we go ahead and we look at this equation up here, um, I want you guys to realize that yes, magnesium is being oxidized um, by the iron plus two ion. But another way that we could look at that is that the iron two plus two ion is being reduced by the magnesium. Okay, so um, please don't get too out of whack uh, if, if a question is um, posed to you in terms of what's happening with respect to the reduction in this process. Okay, because we we understand redox processes as being electron transfer processes. That means that something is giving away electrons and something is accepting electrons. So in this context, um, your magnesium is giving away electrons. It's being oxidized and your iron plus two is accepting those electrons. Okay, so remember these are redox processes, although we're looking at them with respect to um, the oxidation uh, progression. It, it's easier to focus on one thing at a time. Please understand that the other process is also happening simultaneously.